Hello Avatar fans and welcome to the next episode of the Avatar Online podcast. This is going to be episode 237 of our regular shows and we're recording this on February 5th, 2022. This is the official podcast for the fan site Avatar The Last Airbender Online.com. And uh, joining me on this podcast is Greg, Greg 2 b from the site. What's up everyone? And I believe I forgot to introduce myself uh, as the main host, uh, Morgan Airspeed Prime, which is uh, because I suppose it has been a while since the last podcast. I think it's one of the bigger breaks we've had. Um, yeah. And the main reason for that is just that, like, there's been news, but um, like the podcast we potentially could have recorded a month ago looks very similar to the podcast we're going to record today. So um, it's... It's just we're in a kind of holding pattern at the moment, waiting for stuff to happen. And the kind of second half of last year, so far, the start of this year, has not been very news heavy at all. So we're going to start off here, the the kind of format of the show. We're going to do the kind of bigger pieces of news, then get into the smaller pieces of news. And then we'll wrap up with just sort of a kind of 2022 preview style thing, mainly going over what books are, are actually coming out and stuff like that. So, um... We'll start off with, I suppose, what kind of we have to view as being kind of the most significant piece of news, and that is that <laughs> Viacom CBS have announced that they will be doing a virtual investor event and a kind of financial quarter report. Uh, so this is basically the this year's equivalent of the event last year where Avatar Studios was actually announced. And because Avatar Studios information has been so all over the place, like either very minor or no communication at all, there is some expectation that this event may be one of the few places where we maybe get guaranteed news. So uh, this finally being announced officially by Viacom CBS, of course, it's going to be on February 15th. <laughs> so it's uh, 10 days away. Uh, it is going to be virtual, you know, I suppose like last time out, you're going to be able to view this uh, if you're kind of uh, available at the time. Um, it, the description for it just says Viacom CBS will provide an update on the momentum of Paramount Plus, including its diverse global content lineup and more, uh, plus final, financial quarters and stuff like that. It doesn't go into a lot of detail here, but we sort of know what these events tend to be. So they're talking about for investors here's why the next upcoming year or two is going to be exciting and good and make you money basically is because they have content <laughs> coming up. And last year, the Avatar Studios announcement was actually one of the more kind of big things, like in terms of like a new studio that Viacom basically have made. And um, that was one of the bigger announcements. And so uh, there's an expectation that they would mention it at this event. It is by no means confirmed but since it was like the only place it was mentioned really before, it feels like logically this is where it's going to be this time out. So, Greg, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think they'll say anything about Avatar Studios at all at this? I don't know. I mean, I think the, the logic of, you know, from what happened last year to this year makes sense that something would be announced at this event. Um, my only, I guess, hesitation would be in that, you know, it still seems like we're still in like the early game um, as terms of like production and stuff, as we'll mention later on when we get into some of the other news. So I wouldn't particularly, you know, expect anything big to come out from this. Like I would, see there being like a mention you know for sure just that it's something that's coming and that like you know they're working on it and they've made like some headway on it if even that um but i'm not sure in terms of like the overall event you know how much this is going to play into it um you know you never know you could we could be surprised by it um and you know i'm sure everyone would be quite pleased with that if that does come to pass um but i wouldn't i don't feel like right now we could put a whole lot of stock into something happening i mean i'm sure you know people will be watching and if anything does happen you know i'm sure we'll all be the first to know about it of course um but I don't know. I don't know if I have super high hopes for this one being in the beginning of the year. Maybe if it was later on in the year or if they do it again later on like they've done it before, um, there would be something more to be expected. Um, but unless they're doing more branching out with some other 
I guess partners or stuff, maybe then we might get some more news on it, but they don't normally announce as much of that on these type of streams. That's usually the other ones that they do. So I guess we'll have to kind of wait and see. Yeah, it, it's one of those ones where like it's kind of the only real sort of hope for news. Otherwise, it's just going to be completely random. But it's not really the most ideal place for us to get the sort of information that's going to really interest us as fans. Mm -hmm. Which is why, like, I think probably the most we can hope for, and I think I said this back when this news initially came out, is that they they say, obviously, like, Avatar Studios is working on things. Part of the initial announcement last year was movie is the first thing going into production. And that seems to be what all like, the job listings and so on that we'll talk about in a minute uh, are you know, building up towards. I I could see them announcing the movie, like this is the name of the movie. Like it has here is a logo, just to to make it clear that this is a project that Avatar Studios is working on. I don't think we'll see a trailer or anything like that. And I go back and forth on like <laughs> will would it just be like a logo with the title or might they have like you know a p official piece of art like a, a promo image of like the main character because I, I again the expectation here is that like this first project more than likely i think most people are leaning towards is going to be atla related probably maybe like the most people are leaning towards <laughs> older atla so just a look at sort of older ang in the official style and um, would be nice to know that would immediately get people excited. It, it, you're not revealing anything basically about the plot. You're just saying like, title, this is what the movie is. That gets people talking. And I think that's what we kind of need for Avatar Studios because in the last year, basically, the speculation has been the exact same because no, there's been no information whatsoever that like changes the speculation. So I'd just be looking for that basically is just... You know, they said the movie is going into production at the end of the year, but they never like announced that it had gone into production. And the only thing that gave us that impression was basically job listings coming up. So um, that's the most that like I would hope for from this. Very similar to basically what they did show in the event last year, which was basically um, uh, an image. Like it was actually a really badly put together image because I think the the Avatar Studios logo only came out with like the kind of media coverage of it. Yeah. Uh, the the thing they had on screen was very like thrown together. So just like a more kind of nicely done Avatar Studios is working on stuff. Here's the first movie. That's it. And I think that's kind of what everyone really just wants and needs at this point. Um, I'd I'd I suppose like would they have to clarify the date for investors maybe just to give some sense of like what's happening because i think we're still on sort of 2023 at some point um but they should probably clarify that that they're aiming for this date and and so on um but uh what are, what are your thoughts on that do, do, do you think even very minor stuff like that where like a, a logo for the movie a title just to give a little bit of information might be sort of the best we can hope for i mean i think that would fall under the best but in terms of like what would really you know come to pass i don't i don't know it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like they're the type to sort of let that stuff out until they're really ready to actually show it and share it at least that's what you know i've sort of gathered from all the posts that they've mentioned so far via social media and you know just general articles and stuff is that you know when they're ready to share something that they will share it at that point in time um as far as like you know future dates and stuff i mean they could say a date like that i mean maybe they might say like you know q4 of 2023 or something like that like i don't i don't think they're even close to the point where they would give like an estimated like you no know, a hard date that you know of course will probably you know slide regardless anyway so i don't even know if it's if it would be worth it for them to actually try to like make up a date at this point i would you know i would actually rather them not say you no know, any sort of hard date you no know, at this point like just let them keep working on it and getting people and stuff like that for when they're actually you know full steam in production rather than like in pre-pro which is what they seem to be in right now still 
Yeah, I, I think it's just like a frustrating situation that like we went into the event last year with like the the most minor of minor hopes for information. Most people thinking nothing will get announced, but then they <laughs> actually really delivered on the announcement. And now it's been a year, and the position that we're in as a, as fans is probably that like we feel it's maybe even less likely than last year that they'll say anything about it. And that's kind of just been the last year of Avatar in terms of like notable things happening um so hopefully we go in a bit like not expecting anything and we actually deliver because um at the very least february has in recent years tended to be when like stuff for avatar does get announced for like i suppose comics maybe for later in the year and so on but there's not a lot to really base that on but um we'll go into the other piece of sort of like avatar studios news that's more like in a week and a bit, we'll find out if there is any news about Avatar Studios. But little bits and pieces of Avatar Studio news have started to come out here. So we know, I think, what, three new people that are part of Team Avatar. Um, most significantly, um, Laura Montgomery is confirmed to be part of Avatar Studios. She is a director. Um, Tim Hedrick is confirmed to be a part of Avatar Studios as a writer. Now... Tim Hedrick, I think, was fairly obvious that, like, he was part of it, but it had never been confirmed until, I think, the description on, like, one of the more recent uh, Brave in the Elements podcasts. Um, but it makes sense. He's he's the one mainly assisting on the comics at the moment. He's written for both shows. Make complete sense. Laura Montgomery, like, is a really, is probably the most significant one because, again, she worked on both shows previously. Uh, quite a big role on Korra. She then was, like, one of the showrunners on Voltron. So, like we've been sort of speculating about, like Mike and Brian are in more of a, more of a sort of franchise overseer thing. They're going to need, you know, showrunners for the individual projects, and I think that's why Lar Montgomery is kind of back here um, in a kind of significant role. Um, and then they also confirmed uh, again part of the Braving the Elements podcast. They had like a um, I, I forget the name of the position. It was like sort of cultural making sure that the kind of cultural aspects that avatar is referencing is like uh, done well they had uh, someone involved in that on one of the podcasts also um so they have you know it kind of confirms to us that they have a uh, quite a few people at avatar studios we just don't know most of it um so we'll we'll cover this first just the new people uh greg what are your thoughts on this two kind of um veterans of the franchise kind of confirmed finally as part of the team yeah no i think that's a a great showing for sure just to have you know these people on board and you know we kind of knew that they probably would be part of it but you know i guess it's it's nice as fans to sort of get the sort of confirmation that they're part of the group here and you know an official capacity and just you know knowing that that part of you know the production is going forward and you know to have both of them on board who've done stuff before in the past and have continued to been interested and involved with it and you know have spoken about it at cons and other stuff and whatnot i think it's really it's really good to see them on board with this and you know having them in these sort of i guess you know roles that they're going to be in you know is definitely you know more positive for anything that we've heard so far hmm. And the news that went along with this and that like how we found out Laura Montgomery was at Avatar Studios, a part of Avatar Studios, is that she just randomly posted on Twitter like um, job <laughs> listings available for uh, Avatar Studios. And this is what alerted everyone to the fact that like, oh, you must be part of it. And it was confirmed. But uh, we've covered some of these, I think, before, um, but a lot of them have, have popped up in the last few months as well mm -hmm. for a variety of different positions there's a uh, loads of different positions um the most significant ones are mainly the the they had like character designer positions and then i think the most significant one is a uh, look of picture technical director for avatar studios and while there's not a lot of specific information there's a few little bits and pieces in the middle of the description that tells you some stuff like um uh, one of the main responsibilities, develop and maintain an outstanding and customized look for the show that will require the integration of traditional 2D and CG elements. So again, the movie is the co first confirmed project for Avatar Studios. Uh, it was one of the only significant pieces of news we learned after the event was that the movie is apparently going to be in CG, according to Viacom High Ups. Now... We get the confirmation that Avatar Studios is developing this uh, unique 
you know, outstanding and customized look that is 2D and CG. So, uh, and then the character designer stuff is all about how they want the character designers to be able to design in a style in line with ATLA and Korra, which I think really helps to ease the whole CG aspect of like they're, they seem to be trying to gain the benefit of working in CG while still having the 2D look basically best of both worlds and if that if there's going to be multiple projects they need to be able to do it effectively i'm very interested to see what how this goes and how what what the look actually is because people have been like referencing like oh is this going to be like the the spider-verse movie and uh stuff like that um is this going to be kind of almost maybe dragon prince-esque in its style or what uh, but what are your thoughts on what you read from some of these uh, job listings here, like the look that they're going for, for with Avatar Studios? Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know, I think I take it, you know, I think like other people or as many people have, is more of a positive sense that they're actually putting the time into sort of developing this look, which, you know, every production does regardless of if you know about it or not. So that's not really the big thing there. But I think, you know, for Avatar fans being such a fan of the traditional, you know, sort of 2D, you know, digital animation uh, look that we've had so far, um, the idea that they're... I guess developing these techniques and they've had this specifically listed here, um, which I think is, you know, it's a good thing. I mean, there's definitely, you no, know, like you said, there's a bunch of different ways that they can go about it. They can go Dragon Prince, they can go Spider-Verse, they can go, you know, Arcane on Netflix. So there's like, you know, a lot of different ways that they can go about it. And then it'll be really interesting, like you said, to see how it actually turns out, which is probably why I would think we wouldn't see any sort of like, I guess, design work of the character at any sort of point in, like, the immediate near future because, you know, if they're still hiring for these positions, that's something that they're still developing. Now, I'm sure, you know, at this point, they've already had, like, a slew of people already apply for it and whatnot. Um, I've seen many people mention that on, like, social media and stuff like that, especially to some of the more, uh, you know, popular, uh, I guess, avatar and core designer artists on, like, social media, like Instagram and stuff. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, I guess, like, years from now, how, you know, that all went down and here's sort of the, the backstory and stuff like that. So that's something to look fun to in the future. Um, but in terms of the immediate look here, I think, you know, it's definitely, I don't know, I'm really curious to see how it goes because there's definitely a bunch of things that have come out recently that have shown that, you know, it can be done, you know, in a pretty interesting and good way that, you know, makes most people happy with the look if it, you know, has time put into it. So, I don't know, it makes me think that they're at least going to try to put some, you know, time and effort into this. And, you know, knowing Mike and Brian as far as what they've said so far and how their, you know, aesthetics go, I think that's definitely leads towards the the better route of it. Um, but it, it definitely is something that we'll have to sort of, like, wait and see how this goes uh, in the long run. Mm, yeah, I think that's the big thing in terms of anyone being worried about the Avatar Studios art style is that Brian cares a lot about the art and the look of Avatar, both in animation and like the comics. He's not going to like be happy if they have to go for some you know style that he doesn't feel is like exactly what they want. So they're, they're obviously confident that they can do like you know the 2d look with uh, a lot of the benefits of cg sort of behind the scenes maybe and really make it work for them so you know again some communication would be nice about this but obviously it's still <laughs> early um but uh hopefully we see something at this event uh, anything would be great um but from there we'll move into um the next piece of news which i suppose is uh, Chronicles of the Avatar. Now, <clears throat> this is a, a weird one to talk about because when you just say that name, it's like, oh, cool, was, was something new announced? But then you go into, like, where this actually came from, and it seems like the most minor piece of news, even though it sort of suggests something bigger. So I was actually the one who found this initially. So that, 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 that was an interesting experience to be like, oh, did I just miss this for months on the listings? But no, it was relatively recent towards the end of the year, uh, last year. 
Um, so what happened here is that uh, this relates to the Avatar novels, the Kyoshi novels that are already out, as well as like the paperback editions that are still coming out. All of them have changed the description to change the basically the series of novels that the two Kyoshi novels are part of from basically Kyoshi novels to this new name, Chronicles of the Avatar. And what was so interesting about it is that like it changed on most websites like Edelweiss, um, the Abrams book website. It's not just a random piece of information, like the full title of the book is now Avatar Last Airbender, The Rise of Kyoshi, Bracket Chronicles of the Avatar, Book One. It doesn't go into any explanation about why this has happened or anything like that, but it is significant that this has changed. And it's also significant because when the box set came out, it was literally called the Kyoshi novels as the series name. So it's a very recent change that has happened here. Now, obviously, the, the immediate speculation is that we are expecting new novels at some point. We're expecting new novels at some point to cover other avatars. The immediate way to interpret this is that this means that is basically confirmed, even though no other novel has yet been announced. Uh, that's the way I think everyone has <laughs> taken this news, because how else do you interpret it? Otherwise, they've just randomly added this title on for no real reason. Because it's a it's a more general title. Chronicles of the Avatar. Yes, Kyoshi is an avatar, but that seems to be just any avatar. Like, this is a series of books that can cover whichever one we want to, and their chronicles. That's what this seems to be opening the door to. That book three could be about Roku, could be about Karuk, or someone else. What are your thoughts on uh, this interesting piece of news that sort of snuck out there? Yeah, I think I don't know. I mean, I think the the path that everyone is following or most people are following right now seems to be what I you know personally would lean towards too as well. And you know, we have heard it mentioned at least once in sort of pseudo rumor form that there are more books in the way. Although that was so long ago, it almost makes me wonder if that was even really true at that point or if they were just saying things. Um, but you no, know, I think the idea that they would want to continue, you know, making Avatar books after the success of these first two ones, you know, it makes it makes sense in my mind. And you know, to get more of a, a general no sort of umbrella term that you could put all of the books under um i think it definitely you know makes sense to me and you know if they do do more avatars or if they just do it in terms of just the general world and just use the idea that you know the avatar is just sort of the overarching sort of name that they're going for even if they don't do avatar directly i think you know it all could work from that way and you know it doesn't have to be the same author even though you no know, i think that worked out pretty well for us this first go around um you know it just it opens it up more now in terms of you know when we would even you know see anything from this i think that might still be a while because it seems like this you know isn't really the priority for them directly right now especially if this is you know going under the whole you know, i guess avatar legends brand or whatever we want to sort of consider it now um so i don't know how long it'll be until we get you know more direct news on this um but no i it's interesting just to see that that sort of whole stop has been changed mm. yeah and that's the other thing is that like this chronicles of the avatar name reads a lot like avatar legends avatar studios like just a a general title to use for a specific kind of product or something like that um and yeah we're, we're waiting to see when the announcement actually comes like, like you referenced um the german publisher i think last year in or around like february or just after february said that they have news that like there are more novels coming next year and even people who you know speak german fluently were like that that is the interpretation of that it was specifically it says novels and i think in the same thing they were talking about like normal books and comics separately so they they when they said novels they meant novels um and we haven't heard anything about it this would now suggest that something is now sort of in motion and that will actually i suppose get an announcement for this year um the, and and that's the thing like we, we're waiting for comic announcements we're waiting for novel announcement when is it going to happen this at least is a first step. Um, 
but it's hard to predict when <laughs> they'll actually you know go ahead with it because when it gets announced it's going to be at least six months before the book actually comes out so if it, if it has to come out this year like uh, it's going to have to be within the next few months um and we'll see if they have any sort of a plan to put out content significant content uh before any avatar studio stuff comes out um obviously everyone's been speculating about what the next novel will be um i did a whole collaboration video on my channel because it was like the only thing yeah. to talk about um and i think the conclusion we more or less came to was that um roku is definitely a, a big option because he his his era is now the one that feels like the least fleshed out and then also the what we're about to talk about next the uh the kickstarter the the legends rpg game is going to be having like lore information about roku's era so maybe they're tying that in that would make sense that a novel needs that extra detail so that's why they're doing that roku makes a lot of sense yang chen maybe the karuk book to finish off his like kind of full timeline um other than that it's kind of hard to predict for a lot of the more minor avatars who we don't know anything about i'd be surprised if they went back to kiyoshi for book three just because the title suggests other avatars and then Korra and ang are probably not overly likely for a novel but uh which avatars uh, stand out to you as like they should be the book three <sighs> I mean, all those are, are good options, and I guess if they were to really tie it in with the role-playing game, Roku would be sort of like the obvious go for. Um, but I mean, there's a lot they could do. They could do avatars that we don't even know about. I mean, I might, I might even prefer that just to sort of you know get something entirely new, and you know that way, you know it would have less of a chance of like conflicting without anything that we you know currently know, or you know even go back to like you know Zito, or you know I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of different options they could do. I mean, even if they wanted to sort of like, even though we got you know the cool two part for one even if we went back to sort of like his sort of you know later part of his years into the transition of the you know second you know avatar that could also be pretty cool if they went you know back that far and just sort of you know went with what was going on during the world during that time as things were starting to sort of i guess figured out with just the elements in general um in the avatar world but yeah i mean there's definitely a lot that they could go for there and, and i just hope that they pursue that yeah, um, the, the the main discussion that like I feel you, you kind of have to have about sort of the the unknown avatars is just like from almost like a marketing perspective, like can they be guaranteed uh -huh. those books uh -huh. will sell? Because uh, the Kyoshi books have obviously turned Kyoshi into like one of the fan absolute fan favorite characters, but she was already kind of like that before, even if it was more just on the whole kind of like meme idea of like she's the, the most kind of bloodthirsty <laughs> avatar but people thought she was cool just with the little bits and pieces we knew about her and um, so she was sort of a, a standout avatar like you remembered roku kiyoshi at the very least if you don't remember any of the other uh -huh. avatars um if the next book was to be announced as like uh, avatar last airbender or something the the story of salai does that like appeal in a broader sense to the fandom we know it appeals to hardcore fans because we've read the novels we know salai has been mentioned mm -hmm. before and we want to know what that's about new avatar is really exciting but does that does that appeal in the same way that the kyoshi novels do to a more sort of casual fan or are they kind of like who's salai and stuff like that like can can you picture the the cover of that book salai <laughs> in the big title the the picture of this character for the first time that's the only thing that makes me sort of like doubt that i'd love to believe that they have confidence that like any character they can turn into something big but uh, i'm inclined at least for the first couple of books to believe they'll stick to sort of the the known avatars the kind of popular ones that like we could get a, an action figure about it at some point, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, that, that that's where we're at with Chronicles of the Avatar. We're just waiting to see what happens with it, uh, like most everything. The final, I suppose, big piece of news. There's a few other things that we'll we'll cover as well. Is basically the updates on the Kickstarter on the Legends role playing game that have happened since the last podcast, and they've been quite significant here in that. Um, I forget if we actually 
had the update that confirmed like all the physical stuff has been delayed if we actually covered that in the podcast but that happened the physical stuff has been delayed until i think summer a general summer window is what they're saying basically what they're talking about towards the start of the project not having enough printers and stuff like that um is has caused this delay and it's quite a significant delay actually Uh, the most recent update is from january 12th though they have said that there is another update coming next week so i suppose for like you know february 10th or whatever it is um so we're, we're not too far away from the next update, but the January 12th update was called PDF Timeline Update. And basically what it does is it confirms that they're more or less on track with the PDF, so the digital version, but it, it obviously didn't come out in January. So slight delay here. They talk about how the approvals process, which has been a big thing that's gotten in the way of a lot of this running super smoothly, that's basically the reason why we don't have it in January and that it will take a few more weeks. They say, in other words, you should be expecting your core book PDFs in the next few weeks. Uh, and that basically they're saying as soon as it's done and it's approved, they'll send it out via the backer kit and there'll be an update. This is, Obviously, this is built up to, like they said this a few weeks ago and it's now been a few weeks, so it's been a month. The expectation is that next week we'll either be finding out that the book is out this week, next week, or the week after. Beyond that, and we're stretching it into March, that's when, like, okay, there's been a proper delay here. What, what's actually going on here? Um, so the the big thing, again, is just that they're talking to us, but it's very kind of hands-off of just, like, uh, there's been some delays. There, there's not really proper updates like they said there was going to be where, like, they'd fill us in on, like, here's some material from the book so you can like add to your games or anything like that. And we've seen none of the book, no images of any of the products or anything like that. So uh, it's been very like just dealing with delays. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on, on what's happened here? The delays to the physical stuff now the PDF has been a little bit delayed. Uh, wh- wh- where are you at with the, the Kickstarter project? Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's an odd one to sort of follow and just to see how it's gone, which I guess if anyone has done Kickstarters before, they might not be too surprised by this. But, you know, for any Kickstarter, especially one that gathers as much attention as this one has with the fandom that it has, there's plenty of new people who aren't you know, quite familiar with this sort of, you know, back and forth and especially with a a popular ip from you know a big sort of corporate company that you know puts in even more sort of you know pressures and forces in terms of like getting things to actually you know, sort of come out especially like on time and stuff like that and we've seen that you know avatar stuff in general doesn't necessarily have the best sort of track record with things coming out you know sort of as when they've said so this sort of unfortunately follows along on those lines and with everything else going on in the world the idea that the sort of physical items are also being you know pushed back a bit which is just more i guess sort of unfortunate news to hear i mean i really do hope that with the next update that they said that's coming out that you know there is you know more positive news coming forward but i don't know i'm not really sure and you know i wonder if this you know also just is in general just tying into some of the other things that they might be trying to push out or time together in terms of their overall i guess sort of release date of things being scheduled or scheduled ish with delays so i don't know it's a bit sort of up in the air for sure on this one yeah it- it's it's weird because I suppose they, they, they don't mean this to be the case, but they end up being like the only thing that's really scheduled for like the first four months of the year in terms of like new content. Mm-hmm. Because I think at this stage, the, the free comic is the most recent like upcoming comic at this point after all the delays that have, that have happened. So this thing getting pushed back feels like, oh, like nothing is happening at the start of this year for Avatar. Um, so that's why I, I really hope that this update that they have next week is that we're sending it out in a few days. And I hope it's not like, oh, we need to go through another approvals process uh, because they sent back more feedback and it just goes on and on. That's the last thing that we need to happen because for most of the project, it felt like they're really on top of things, they're really organized, and then 
the second the monthly update started it's like oh there's basically delays but we're not telling you there's delays oh wait there's delays and now it, it kind of is, is building so so i think something needs to kind of go right here one i just i i really want some new content and this is confirmed to have new content and i think part of the problem is just that we don't really know the scope of it like there's going to be new roku information but like in, in what way it could be super exciting and like packed with like lore information or it could be just a few little bits i just really want something new to talk about and so like if to finally get the confirmation that like oh new stuff coming like <laughs> next week or in a week or two that that is something that's actually going to get uh, people excited uh, because at this stage like uh, i don't think the game is something that like super interests me so it is more like i'm i'm backing this for the physical items and the the lore that's part of the books more than anything um but yeah the other thing is that um this is just the core book that we're being sent in a few weeks they're still working on the wan chi tong's adventure guide which um it was kind of a little bit of a news update to me that you know i'd more taken it that like once we had unlocked the adventure guide that like all the content was like grouped together effectively and so they wouldn't really be separating it but they are doing that so i don't know um they only really said that there's some new wan chi tong information i think in the adventure guide we don't really know the full scope of that but um the core book, I think, is where they said most of the new stuff is. So there's that. Um, but I, I suppose, how how excited are you for for getting like the the PDF? What what's uh, interesting you about it? Yeah, no, I mean, I think I'm I'm definitely more along the lines of you, where I'm interested in the sort of information that it has, and just sort of the, I guess, sort of the any of the extra bits. I mean, I don't know if I'm really sort of expecting anything like huge or anything like that in terms of like the new content that's going to be in there but you know from what they've said it seems like there is going to be something that is going to add to the universe add to roku add to sort of i guess just sort of the general sort of understanding and then i'm also just curious enough just you know in terms of it getting into more people's hands i mean i know that they have been doing the the play testing that they've been doing on their magpie site and stuff like that and from the people who have talked about it they have have said that you no, know, it has been pretty interested. You know, as much as they can say, which isn't much, of course, at this point. Um, so I'm really, I don't know. I'm really interested in seeing, even if I personally won't play it that much. I'm really interested in seeing what other people do with it and sort of just how it expands things. I think you know, for the people who are really into these type of games and you know, you know, share their games online, or even if they just do it with like you know their close circle, I think it's really something that seems a lot that people are really interested in if they're into doing this um i mean i wonder you know i do wonder sort of the the breakdown versus you know people like us that are more interested in the lore and information versus people that are really into sort of playing it um you know how that sort of breaks down but i'm sure it'll be plenty of people talking about it and just sort of breaking it down and then you know any of the other you know extra i guess auxiliary stories that people make up based off of you know what comes from the core book i think will also be something that's worth you know exploring um and it'll definitely add to just you know just more content in general um you know even if it's not all super official or anything like that it's still you know something that's out there something that keeps the fandom interested in it which i think is definitely something that it needs at this point yeah I, i'm just kind of interested to see the way they sort of lay this sort of stuff out in terms of like does it note when like this is like canonical information versus like this uh like story suggestion that they have they have a few of the kind of scenarios written into the books that you can play like like is in the yeah. quick start like are they going to say that like this event actually happened but the exact way you play it isn't necessarily like canonical like these characters exist in the world during this era but uh you know only this ending is like what actually happens or, or what that's the sort of stuff i, I also w want to see what they do because like the the one from the the kit the quick start guide like it's kind of like a interesting stuff like there's like a fire sage involved and like it's it's set during one of the, the mm -hmm. different eras i was like okay that that sounds like a cool idea and then like you just sort of say that like a team of heroes you know helped this to happen and it's just like canon that a group of people 
which is basically the player characters assisted with the actual known characters doing stuff. But, um, you know, there, there's something to be excited about. Um, uh, I hope it is, like, maybe more significant, like, the, the Roku information than we think, because uh, I think it would be cool if there was, like, enough information where, like, we actually have to take, like, a few podcasts to go through it rather than just, like, one podcast, uh-huh, you know, uh-huh. 10 minutes, like, oh, we learned, like, two new things about Roku. That's it. Um, just how little we know about it as well. But, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, next week, so I think they usually put these updates out as a Wednesday or Thursday, so not, not too many days to wait, um, and we'll hopefully know the release date for that. Um, that's the big news, so we'll get into some of the smaller stuff here. Um, the first one, I suppose if you're a fan of the Netflix show and what's been presented about it so far, you, this will probably interest you. So the, we had the most recent <laughs> batch of casting announcements, uh, so we got... Uh, Azula is going to be portrayed by uh, Elizabeth Yu. Uh, Suki is going to be played by Maria Zhang. Um, uh, we have uh, Suki's mother, Yukari, is going to be played by Tamlin Tamita. Uh, Kiyoshi is going to be played by Yvonne Chapman. And uh, Casey Camp Hornek is going to be playing uh, Gran Gran. So, uh, very interesting stuff here. Gran Gran makes sense. We we need that character for the opening few episodes. Um, uh, interesting, Kiyoshi has been cast because Kiyoshi really only appears in season one of the show as like a statue, like twice, basically. We don't actually like see her. <laughs> so that suggests they're maybe moving up some Kiyoshi flashback or adding in some stuff with that. Uh, Suki, great to get that confirmed. Azula going to be in here as well, because it, by the looks of things, with the fact that the I think um, Daniel Day Kim has posted a lot about being on set, they they're clearly giving Ozai more of a role. So that would suggest Azula is probably going to have more of an early role. Um, and then the most interesting thing here, completely new, Suki's mother Yukari. So this is the biggest example so far of like something just blatantly new that is not in the kind of continuity that we know especially because one of the most recent pieces of story content was Suki alone where if you're going to introduce her mother it'd probably be there there was no sign of her I suppose technically Suki's mother could be called Yukari and could exist but uh, I don't think you're at all meant to interpret this as meaning anything to the sort of animation continuity but um they're clearly trying to add something to Suki's character here and slightly change up the way the Kyoshi stuff works to probably make it more significant because it is a fan favorite sort of uh, you know location now. The character of Kyoshi is significant. Mm-hmm. Suki's more popular now. What are your thoughts on uh, what this casting information suggests about uh, the approach the Netflix show will take? Yeah, I mean, I think it goes along the lines of what many people or what they've even said that, you know, it will, you know, keep sort of the, I guess, core ideas that, you know, the show has had and some of, you know, obviously the characters and stuff, but it is, you know, expanding upon it and taking it in slightly different ways or adding more to it. So, no, I think it's for something that's trying to be maybe slightly different than, you know, the original source, which is probably a good thing to some degree. Um, No, sounds pretty cool. So, I don't know. I'm interested. I'm still, you know, I'm like interested enough, you know, to see where it goes, even if I haven't been following, you know, every single little bit of uh, the sort of news with the actual live action show. So it's cool to see how it's still progressing. I think that's sort of the, the key thing to keep in mind that it is, you know, in production and everything is still going on. So it will come out eventually. Yeah, like, like we're going to get a big update on this before we get a big update on any Avatar Studios thing, more than likely. Um. The other thing is that I think they they did confirm Yukari is the like leader of Kyoshi Island. Um, so I guess this more or less means like mm-hmm. this character is replacing Oyaji, is is like the other kind of thing yeah. that this more or less leads to, um, which I think has led people to speculate that they're they're gonna um, lean Kyoshi Island to being more sort of like um, kind of female led, like really heavily into that more than just like the warriors are all uh, women so um that'll be interesting to see how that plays out um I, i'm guessing it probably means the kyoshi involvement here might be the stuff from shells th- that would lean into that the most mm. heavily 
it'll be interesting to see a scene like that adapted of just um Kyoshi teaching mm-hmm. the warriors and actually showing that origin uh, on screen but uh we'll see where they go with that um next up um this this actually got completely like announced i think since the last podcast the uh free comic book day uh 2022 avatar and Korra book so we are getting another avatar book usually they tend to take a break uh after doing one but they're they're doing another kind of both franchise uh books this time out though they seem to be reversing the sort of story significance um Last year's book was the core was the main story. Avatar was the side one. This time out, it seems like Avatar is the main story. The Korra comic is the side one. Um, we do actually have an early look at the cover this time out. They got that out relatively <laughs> soon. They, they say it's not a final cover, but I guess it just more or less needs to be colored in. Maybe something in the background. Uh, but it is Aang on the cover. Uh, it looks to be his like book three design, but it could also be the comic design we'll see how it goes um it doesn't tell us a lot and the description again doesn't sell us anything either both your favorite <laughs> avatars return in two all new stories from uh, avatar and Korra. dive into the fun for free comic book day and expect excitement familiar faces and a hefty helping of shenanigans that's all it says um, we do have the creative team. It says uh, written by Meredith McLaren, uh, art by Meredith McLa- McLaren, and also art and cover art by uh, Kicking Shoes, which is an art team. So I think that confirms to us that Kicking Shoes is doing the art in the core in the Avatar story, and then Meredith McLaren is doing basically most of the creative stuff on the Korra story itself. So I think that just leaves us with, I guess, the writer for the Avatar story, unless Meredith McLaren is doing both. Uh, again, I don't think any of these creators have teased anything about what this is about, and unfortunately the comic doesn't tell us a lot either. Uh, it is Aang on his own, though, which maybe leads to, like, oh, is he doing some, like, air temple exploration? Could this be the one where he finally finds the herd of Sky Bison? That's always been, like, the story we want to see. Um <laughs> Otherwise, not really sure what to expect here. But I am happy we have this because this year there's not a lot of comics announced. So it's, it's good that we have this, especially after the, the 2021 comic was a, like surprisingly really, really good. So uh, what are your uh, thoughts on this, uh, this year, another free comic? Yeah, I mean, well, I'm glad that we're getting the comic just because there hasn't been much other news in terms of the comics in general. So any news in comics is, is good news. And the fact that we actually have a cover this year versus before where we were kind of waiting on that for a while, I think is, you know, at least a step in the right direction. So maybe they've noticed that from before. Um, but yeah, you're right. There isn't really much to, to go on it right now. Like, I mean, we could make up a whole scenario for what Aang is doing sort of on his own right now, but that doesn't, you know, there's, a lot that could go into that sort of uh, idea there. So I don't know really what quite yet to think of the story, but I am glad that we are getting this. Yeah, like uh, I like Ang, but like just a solo Ang cover it doesn't tell you a lot, just because he is the franchise sort of main character. Um, but yeah, uh, Free Comfort Day is expected to be May seventh, uh, twenty twenty two this year, whereas it was much later in the year last year. So. Um, like I said earlier, uh, this ends up is is outside of the Legends RPG. This will be our first, I suppose, you know, real taste of proper new story content in 2022. It's unfortunate that we have to wait until like nearly the halfway point of the year, but at least it's something, and it is a bit of both franchises once again. It's not like they've done in years before last year, where it's like Avatar and something and <laughs> Avatar and Star Wars or whatever and they've done in previous years. Um, so uh, there's that. Um, some action figure news that's happened recently. Um, McFarlane have announced a few new things. Um, not a lot of it is like super exciting in that the two that are really easy to just like quickly go past at both scales, so the 5 inch and the 6 slash 7 inch scale, they are going to be doing an Avatar State Book 1 Aang. Um, 
there's not a ton to say here other than that I think on the bigger scale I think the the head sculpt is a lot better you get more accessories with the bigger uh Aang figure uh in that like there's a cool thing that attaches onto the staff he has a water effect part now and it looks pretty good uh the smaller scale avatar state Aang feels very just repaint by the numbers doesn't seem too interesting but the two actually interesting figures are again at the small scale we're getting uh, Iroh and Toph as I suppose our wave two more or less um, and it is sort of classic you know book one Iroh so different than what Diamond Select are doing He's, he comes with a, a lightning effect part that sort of curls around his arm and obviously Iroh is a very different sort of shape of character it's like a bigger figure than a lot of the other ones we've had so far it looks quite good even if I guess it's going to be quite limited with the articulation just because they can't do too much crazy stuff with uh, the way his robes are but it looks pretty good the head sculpt seems very nice Um the Toph unfortunately it doesn't look that great the general figure looks okay but um, the her hair covers her face I think a little bit too <laughs> much and the face also looks a little off to me as well Otherwise, I actually like the effect part that she comes with, um, and in general, it looks pretty solid. But um, what, what are your thoughts on these new uh, McFarlane figures that have been announced? Yeah, no, I definitely get your idea behind sort of the the hair being a little bit longer, her her front bangs particularly, which I don't know, I guess that's sort of her an iconic part of her character so that would be something that you know would stand out either good or bad on the character um but the overall i guess design of both of these two new ones are definitely pretty good i like the the look of them so i think if you know people are interested in these uh scale figures um definitely would be worth getting and i do agree that the ang at the seven inch one definitely looks pretty interesting um at least in terms of the overall design compared to the the smaller one um so that one i think definitely looks you know interesting i, I don't know it looks very poseable which i think is something that we're always sort of like concerned with these figures is how much posability they have um you know considering that's such like a integral part to the show itself um so no i think these are cool ones that they're continuing to, to put out here when they do come out yeah, like, uh, I suppose only in, like, the last couple of weeks, I actually did get my two 7-inch uh, uh, McFarlane figures. And, yeah, they definitely feel like the best in terms of just, like, quality and articulation that we've had so far. I think the only thing that holds back the first wave, which is book one, Aang and Zuko, is just that I think the the outfits that they're in in their book one designs are not the most suited for action figures which has been a very common thing mm. I've said in reviews of merchandise for like book one Ang especially, that that outfit seems very complicated to do accurately and also have articulation. So I really think that more companies should do book three Ang and especially book three Zuko um, as like the first things that they do almost. But, um, you know, that's where we're at there. Um Probably the biggest merchandise announcement over the last few months was this. Even though there's, there's nothing visual to go along with it, but Good Smile <laughs> Company have announced that they're going to be doing a Nendoroid Ang and a pop-up parade Korra. So uh, previously, Good Smile had done a Nendoroid Korra, I think back in 2015 or 16. Very cool. People thought it would maybe lead to more of the Japanese companies getting involved and uh, doing Avatar stuff. It didn't. So here they are coming back and doing Nendoroid for Aang. And a pop-up parade is a sort of a, a sort of set size, set price point uh, series of figures, which is sort of like a basic stand, but sculpted pretty nicely. Um, accurate representation of the characters. So this is not going to be like an Nendoroid Jibby style thing. The Korra. The Korra is actually just going to be a proper, like, uh, you know, statue. Like, uh, I think the price point is like, what, $42 or, or something like that? I think it's a, it's set like 4,200 uh, yen or something like that. Um, lots of people very, very excited about this, uh, just because, you know, the quality of a lot of the Japanese companies is quite high. <laughs> uh, Nendoroids are really collectible and they've got a unique, you know, cool chibi style and they come with lots of accessories. And then the pop-up parades, I, I I think for Korra especially, like the first like cheap Korra statue that's probably going to be out in like years. Um, <laughs> and hopefully this leads to more. 
they've gone from doing one lone figure to now they're doing two and both franchises hopefully more i'd love to see an enderoid zuko i'd love to see more pop-up parades um i I hope this leads to something big but uh your thoughts on this uh good smile getting back into avatar Yeah, no, I saw this announcement. I thought this was pretty cool. I really do like uh, the core and Android that I do have. So I think that's definitely a good one to actually have. And you know, I don't know, it really feels like those have like a good set of like motions to them compared to a lot of the the other ones that we've gotten um, up until this point. So I guess it might have taken them quite a while to come back to it. But I guess, you know, with the recent surge in popularity, it makes sense to sort of come back at them, which hopefully, like you said, this means more. But I guess I think that'll really, you know, depend on sort of, you know, how things go with like the movie and everything else in the future. So it seems like that will have to be sort of a, a wait sort of see thing. But you no, know, the idea of having both of these come out um hopefully soon um will be cool to see. Mm-hmm. Uh and then I, I believe also like as part of this, I think they did announce like a Nendoroid SpongeBob as well. So um there, there, there's some kind of fun <laughs> stuff here. They're 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 expanding out a little bit. Um so that's cool. Um I think a lot of people are hoping this maybe leads to a re-release of the Korra Nendoroid, which I think is quite expensive at this point, um, just because of how collectible they are. So mm-hmm. um, that's definitely interesting to see. Uh, but like I said, so far, no visuals to really go along with them. They were just like very early announcements where they just showed images of the two characters uh, from the show, basically, uh, concept stuff. Um, next, continuing on the merchandise side of things, a uh, new company doing Avatar stuff, and that is a uh, U2s, uh, Y-O-U-T-O-O-Z. They're doing sort of Funko Pop, the kind of chibis, I think, that we covered a few months ago, uh, style uh, figures, uh, kind of super deformed, but in their own unique style. Uh, they have like six announced so far. I think it's most of Team Avatar, and then they're, they're also uniquely, they're doing like a, a Momo and an oppa kind of separately um they they feel very funko poppy in that they all have the kind of a, a unique style of eyes but otherwise it's like the you know the giant head um a little bit more going on i suppose with the poses um i i personally don't super like the look of these that much and i think in that i think a lot of the other kind of uh more stylized figures look better but uh i suppose for for people out there it's it's another option um and they seem to be doing some you know at least characterful figures here but uh what are your thoughts on uh, these u2s yeah these are definitely i don't know it does have the funko pop sort of feel but they're they're definitely you know skewed towards i guess their style of figures if you look at any of the other figures that they have on their site so they definitely have a particular look for them and i think i don't know for me personally i think probably momo and appa are probably my favorites out of all the ones that they you know have announced here so far in terms of like no the characters sort of fit those looks to them at least to me personally i mean i don't know i think it's it's definitely something that you're either going to be sort of into or not into so i don't know it's not a a brand that i'm familiar with so i'm not sure the, the general popularity of them but they seem to have a lot so i'm sure they've been doing a whole bunch of different ones at this point now so i don't know i think the poses are kind of cool like most of the poses kind of work for me in the most part and i like the the general scope because the they feel like they have sort of like the real sort of shapes of the characters because they're not completely sort of like chibified or unique um but the heads are more sort of the the unique style especially with the eyes and how those are sort of designed so i don't know it's interesting some of them seem to already be sold out so it looks like they're doing pretty well mm-hmm. uh last merchandise thing i guess is that um there's a new cora funko announced except it's a figure it's like the first Korra Funko they're just now getting around to doing a glow in the dark version of it um very weird announcement because on one hand it's like oh does this mean they're finally getting back into Korra Funko Pops might we finally get a second wave with like Bolin and Tenzin and so on but it is just the original Korra like years on from its initial release uh 
being released in glow in the dark as an exclusive to a box warehouse um it's an interesting one because uh it's it's already out apparently people have got it um it looks like it's a really good glow in the dark um based on pictures i've seen but um it just is kind of like does this is it leading to more Cora funkos that'd be very cool this year the anniversary year but um i don't have a lot to say about it because uh, i tend to not really be particularly drawn in by just like glow in the dark exclusive metallic exclusive i more care about like the the mold the kind of unique mold of the figure the pose more so than oh it's unique just because it glows uh but uh, do you have any thoughts on this uh kind of random individual new cora pop yeah it's it's an odd one i don't know like the fact that you can already get it and that people already have it and you can just like order it now is just i don't know it seems like a weird time delay type of thing like maybe they just like got stuck in something or i don't know i mean you know we've mentioned we've talked about it before so like it's, it's a cool pose it's not like a bad one or anything like that um it's just sort of a new variant of it so i don't know i guess you know if you're more into the collecting side of things and this is you no know, maybe something to keep in mind that you can get right now apparently um but yeah i don't i wonder if this will lead to anything else i don't know it doesn't this doesn't feel like it's going to lead to more funkos for for core or anything like that mm. Yeah, and I suppose that's the thing in general, like, so far this year, like, I'm, I'm surprised, like, it's still very early on in the year, I get it, but, like, I'm surprised we haven't seen more Korra stuff, like, already from, like, the end of last year, um, but I suppose I, I think a lot of the Toy Fair stuff is cancelled, so I guess we'll just start to see the companies gradually announce their stuff for more towards the end of the year, and hopefully Korra will be part of that, because, like, we know um, McFarlane have the, the Korra license, at least, um but uh yeah that's that um i think one of the final pieces of news before we get into our sort of like look through the books that actually are coming out that we have dates for is um dark horse uh recently got like acquired or like bought by the embracer group uh obviously it's a weird one in that like it, it immediately doesn't seem to change anything for dark horse and none of the news is like specifically really addresses how this like affects avatar other than i guess this now means the embracer group through their acquisition of dark horse now have some access to the avatar franchise um in that like there was some talk in like the announcement post that like it allows them to sort of like you know connect their ips and so in some way um because like embracer group is like i think mainly video game stuff uh from what i could i remember from the post i didn't read it too closely because again the impression i got was just that okay this is i guess decent for dark horse and that like it solidifies them as like the what's well, the third or fourth biggest comic company and um, and especially with like idw i think have lost like most of their franchises relatively recently dark horse are sort of mm. almost known as the main like ip dark uh comic company uh but i i don't think this will really affect avatar that much um at all but uh, do you have any thoughts on this dark horse acquired by embracer group yeah i mean i don't know the the sort of being acquired by companies is something that you know usually takes a little bit to sort of see how it's actually going to play out so it's probably still early days and seeing if it's going to actually like change things or if they're gonna add more people to it or if they're gonna take people away or anything along those sort of lines i mean i guess you know with the whole idea that they do have a whole bunch of different you know video game platforms or vr and you know sort of pc stuff that maybe that could lead to something else if you know they do put in more you know effort into doing something along those lines for avatar like maybe cbs or viacom will sort of reach out to them in terms of you know producing something else with it but again that's something that that's probably super far out so if that even is a thing you know we won't see anything from that for for quite a while i would think mm, yeah uh, i think this is a news when i when i did a video on it everyone was just kind of like Eh, I guess uh, we'll see if anything happens it's just like wait and see for the most part um but yeah that's all the news that there's been uh, so we'll we'll wrap up here with I suppose 
the whole delays of, of books will incorporate into this kind of section here. We'll, we'll just go through like the stuff that's like has dates, where everything's at at the moment to get across that like look, we're going to be waiting a few months into the year for real stuff to happen, uh, but also that like the end of the year is kind of open for announcements. So the most recent upcoming book is Avatar The Last Airbender North and South Omnibus. So this is the uh, fifth omnibus. It's the last Guri Huru omnibus. And this should be the one that finishes the uh, spine image that's being uh, done with the, the spines of these books. Uh, it obviously creates a weird situation with regards to like they're still imbalanced to reprint. How's that going to work with this in that is imbalance going to get a cover that's like the previous five books or is Peter Wartman going to hop in and do that? How does that relate to the spine image? Not really sure, but 22nd of February for this book and... If this book actually ends up coming out on the 22nd of February, I believe that this will be the first Avatar book in probably five, six years to actually come out on the date that it was originally announced as coming out. I think that's how <laughs> bad things have been, that this book is actually going to be the first in that long to actually hit its initial date. And, you know, it's taken, like, it's pretty crazy. It's taken five complete reprint books for that to happen um, is is really crazy and shows you just how bad things have been but um there's not too much to say about north and south uh, i suppose uh, do you have any thoughts on how they're going to like execute on the whole uh, spine image thing given that there's still a series left to cover yeah that's i don't know i wonder if they would just do some sort of like addendum to the sort of design or something like that that sort of like makes it feel sort of part of it but not really part of it i don't i don't know about that i mean they could just do it on this own sort of you know set it as well which i guess is pretty much just what they have originally so i don't know about that one yeah and then the, the other thing here is just like if you actually got the last omnibus smoke and shadow you'll remember that they really badly got the spine image wrong in terms of like the like alignment and stuff like that like it the image is mm. kind of ruined almost at this point. Um, it's, I think it's pretty much every copy I've seen anyone kind of talk about. Everyone who's seen my, my video review I did on the Spoken Shadow Omnibus is just like, oh, I thought it was just my copy, but no, it's way off. And I'm, I'm interested to see is the North and South one going to be accurate to the image in that they used, I guess, for Smoke and Shadow or the previous one in that it could make it off even more. <laughs> um, so that it just looks terrible <laughs> going onwards or it's just the one error in between smoke and shadow and north and south um i actually don't know how that's going to work because it could go terribly um because it's one of the few like selling points i think f that's unique about this these editions of the books um so uh i hope they don't get it even more wrong but there's that um May 3rd, 2022, uh, Zuko finds his way. This is not a Dark Horse book. This is the new screen comics format where they're not continuing, I guess, with the, you know, book one water, volume one, two, three, four, or five, however many it was going to be. They seem to have scrapped that after two volumes and are just doing, like, <laughs> themed editions of, like, here's the Zuko book two story, effectively. Um... I really, at this point, do not see the appeal of these, like, at all, outside of just, here's a book to, for kids. Like, completely, like, fans really have no interest in this. This is purely just for kids. Um, not sure what the plan is of just, like, they're obviously just trying to make money off the Avatar popularity at this point, because it seems very clear that the previous format just wasn't doing too well. But uh, did you have any thoughts on that? The fact that they seemingly did just scrap the whole series of like book one, two, three, and the four volumes per edition and so on. Yeah, it just makes me think that the sort of need for those overall or the marketing of those ones is just not where it really is. Like, I don't know, maybe, you know, once everything, you know, comes out and it's more popular and then sort of the, the limelight, maybe it'll be worth it for them to sort of come back to those. But in sort of like this, you know, 
low period of you know content and stuff it doesn't it probably just wasn't really worth it like it makes sense more to me to like hit the stories that people really you know are interested in and talk about or will want to read to their kids mm -hmm. uh next uh we have avatar the last airbender chibi's volume one ang's unfreezing day this is this book is now out on the 14th of june 2022 this book has been so heavily delayed that I don't remember what the date was the last time we discussed this book. But I believe the last time we discussed this book was it being delayed. So um, I think it's probably <laughs> been another week or two uh, since then. It's it's at, it's on delay like number, I think, six at this point or something like that, five or six. Uh, we still have no clue really what this book is really like. I get it, it's Chibi's, but does that just refer to the art style, or does that mean it's part of, like, the Chibi sort of continuity with all those shorts? They're saying, you know, Tim Hedrick is part of this, and the story could be interesting, because they're effectively talking about, sort of, like, Aang doesn't remember his birthday, so let's say his birthday is the day he was unfrozen from ice and celebrate it. That could go either way, it could just be some random fun, or it could actually be a little bit of an emotional thing for Aang, celebrating his birthday. Um, the problem with this book has just been that it's been so heavily delayed. This was announced, I think, the week after the Investor event last year. So this is a post-Avatar Studios like book announcement, even though I, I guess the timing on that just makes it kind of weird. But obviously, like I said, since then, like five-ish delays, no sign of Volume 2 being announced, despite it, us knowing about it so long. Um... I've no clue what to make of this book uh, at all. Uh, where are you at on the uh, the Chibi comic here? <laughs> I mean, I remember when it got announced, and it, it seemed like there was like some you know general interest behind it. I you know it's, it's so unfortunate that that's probably like so far waned at this point of it being you know pushed back so far and i don't even remember if there was like an official reason for it if it's just because of everything going on or just you know shortage and getting supplies or just whatever because the book you know as far as we know is done so like it could have you know come out technically in another format but i guess it sort of has to wait to go through sort of the the official sort of book release cycle which you know seems unfortunate at this point with it being so far pushed back um you know and then there's just the whole idea is is it even have anything in it that's really you know worth being like you know known about like is there anything that's really going to like say i guess you know officially canon or whatever as you would say um so i don't know this seemed interesting you know i've seen posts about it from like the artists and stuff like that so it's just uh unfortunate yeah it's 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 a weird one because it almost makes you feel like not super confident about the book because like where is volume two like if this had been delayed and it's effectively done like why hasn't volume two been announced yet so um the other unique thing about it is that, like, I believe in the last few months, the listing changed from, like, paperback to hardcover. So it's actually a hardcover book, uh, which I think makes sense given that, like, it's only 48 pages. So it's smaller than all the other things. They're making it sort of clear that this is different than all the other comics um, because it's, like, a small hardcover, um, I suppose, more aimed for kids. But we'll see what it is. Um, it just means that... You know, it's it's June fourteenth at this point, though I wouldn't be surprised if it gets delayed again, just because that's how things have been going. That probably means that like the earliest like I'll maybe I'll be able to request like a review copy is like middle of April, potentially, because I, I really want to know what this is. Uh. The big problem is just that this does not feel like a sort of lead Avatar comic for the year which right now is the position that it's in. Like, it's the only... <laughs> it's the only book that's, like, officially just Avatar. Like, yeah, yeah like I was saying, um, the, uh, the the free comic is Avatar and Korra. The Korra comic is, like, a short story compilation. We've no follow-up to Suki alone or anything like that. So it's, it's weird that this is being put in that position where it feels like this is a replacement to a format that was already a replacement to a different format. That it's just getting like worse and worse mm -hmm. without announcements in play. Um, I, I, I just don't know what to make of this at this point. Um, next books are nothing too crazy here. Um, 
the special edition gift set version of the cookbook that comes with the um, apron. Again, it's just the cookbook, but it also has the apron. Cookbook was fine. Uh, if you're into into that, apron looks kind of cool. It's got like a it's got it's Airbender color scheme and it's got <laughs> the like uh, element symbol on it. But uh, it's kind of an expensive set for what it is. It's like what forty five dollars. But if you want an avatar apron, there you go. <laughs> um, there's that. Uh, this is a new product we actually didn't talk about here, but um, there we the 2022 calendar was an announcement last year we now have the 2023 calendar uh, same sort of format and style here watercolor illustrations um, by the kiyoshi um novel cover artists uh, and they're confirming that it's uh, all new images here uh, from the this artist for the calendar created especially for this calendar it mentions characters like uh, ang karuk yue Kiyoshi and yang chen so um, that's going to be cool, you know, getting to see this artist do Karuk, Yue, more Kiyoshi, and in Yang Chen as well. So that's exciting. Uh, this was a very kind of cool announcement, you know, uh, Avatar calendar with unique art. And it's even more unique this year in that I think we'd seen most of the images from the last one. But this is um, new stuff again. Uh, and any thoughts on this? Uh, they're, them continuing the calendar it was obviously, I guess, successful last year. Yeah, no, I mean, I got one, so I think it's definitely worth it for them to, to keep it going um, in terms of, you know, the artwork it is in general and it could be used for a whole bunch of different things, I'm sure, as well. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. I have the calendar as well. It's cool. Like, just recently switched it over to the, the Sokka image for February. Um, very nice. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it looks like there's going to be a, some maybe more obscure characters for this uh, next one. Um, so there's that. Uh, then, uh, I think this is another delay, but I don't think anyone really has any clue really what this book is. Avatar The Last Airbender, Appa Figurine with Sounds, but it is a book. Um, oh, yeah. This is now 11th of October release date, uh, 2022. Uh, I think when we covered this before, the idea is that it's a three inch Appa Figurine that has like a, a, like a, a stand basically, and it does have a sound effect thing going on and it comes with a 32 page book that basically has quotes and art from the show i guess it might be very specifically about oppa um basically you're paying for the figurine and the book is just like a thing to make it a book it's it's a gift set style thing uh i we haven't seen an image of what it looks like yet at all but it's i guess going to be kind of cool i guess um um do you have any thoughts on this no i forgot that that one kind of existed <laughs> yeah it, it was so far off i think even when it got initially announced uh, and now it's even further delayed uh this we can talk about this one when we actually get to see what it looks like um and then i guess this is both kiyoshi novels uh, rise of kiyoshi and shadow of kiyoshi paperback versions are scheduled for currently the 12th of March, 2024. Yes, 2024 dates. Uh, that's how crazy things mm. are. Um, I'm guessing that will change. I think a lot of the listings for these have actually been taken down. So it might not actually be 2024. They'll maybe come up with a... Put them out in the spot whenever they have space. I don't really know. Uh, either way... The books are available. You can get the hardcovers. You can get the hardcover two pack. You know the the um, box set with the uh, bonus in it. But there's not too much to say about that. On the Korra side of things, um, the next book coming out is the Book Three Change uh, art book, second edition, and also the deluxe edition of the second edition. This was very recently delayed by basically a month from i think effectively like the it was either the 15th or the 22nd of february to the 22nd of march and this delay has only happened within the last week or so um because this was meant to be out very shortly in or around the same time as the omnibus for north and south so it's now out a month later um again 
these things are just happening. These are the sort of delays that we sort of expect because of like what's happening in the world at the moment. Um, but again, they never explain them. They just, the date changes and that's it. Um, after that, book four balance, second edition, also deluxe edition. This is currently scheduled for the 21st of June, 2022. But if the book three book is getting delayed, this is probably going to get delayed as well. So expect this to probably move into July or maybe even August. Um, and then we have uh, Legend of Korra Patterns in Time. And this has probably been the most frustrating delay and the thing that has frustrated fans the most over the last few months. This book has been delayed, I think, twice at this point. So it's it's now out, 28th of June, 2022. I think it was previously delayed from its April date, April 12th. So I think the day... I think it was April 13th, so it was the day after the actual official day of the Korra 10-year anniversary. Perfect timing. Delayed by like two months. Uh, to I think the 21st of June, and now it's delayed by another week again on top of that. Um, very frustrating because this is the only like, <laughs> I suppose, truly significant comic that we've had announced recently. And it's already being heavily hit by delays. And again, we don't know anything about the new books in it, just that it has the reprints for the free comic book day books. Um, but uh, what are your thoughts on some of these uh, delay stuff here? Especially on the on the Korra side of things here, where we actually have a few Korra specific books with like the reprints of the art books and the, the comic compilation. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't know. I think with it being the year that that... I don't know. It would be. It would have been cool if that stuff would have lined up better with their actual release dates. I mean, at least it's still, you know, as of now, still coming out this year. Has it been pushed to like, you know, farther out as some other things have? Um, but I don't know. It's unfortunate, especially considering that's like some of it, at least, you know, will be like newer stuff that we haven't really seen, um, or even just having it in more compilation, especially with like the cover art for one of the books, um, you know, that was really sort of, you know, spoken about when it was first sort of announced. So to have that be even more delayed at this point is really a sad thing to see considering, you know, how many people were looking forward to it. Yeah. And, and again, the thing to realize about this book is that it's only 72 pages and that is like 72 pages minus, I think, usually like eight or six pages for like just the credits pages. So it's yeah. only really going to be like 64 pages of content and like 30 ish pages of those. So basically half of the book is, is the three books we already know about. So it only leaves them space for like effectively three new stories. If even that, we'll, we'll see what, what, how, what way it goes. So you, you do ask the question of like, like, I guess all the delays are because of, uh, like, you know, not related to just the comic being finished. It's more the printing, organizing aspect of things that's causing these delays. But the reason I, I always hesitate with this is that the previously most delayed book ever for Avatar was basically the Avatar version of this book, Team Avatar Tales. Uh, it was delayed probably like six or seven times. And I think across all the delays, it, it ended up being delayed by like, I think, 14, 15 months. So it was delayed by over a year. Um, and so we don't want that to happen to this book because then it will miss the anniversary thing, which they actually seem in their marketing to be trying to tie in very heavily with this book to the point where they actually, I think only like a week ago. So after the delay had happened and the book was off April, they posted about it on social media saying it was out, like pre-order the book now and get it for the anniversary in April. And then everyone in the comments was just like, um, but the book's not out in April. Um, and they got a bit like, <laughs> you know, annoyed with people for pointing it out that do you not know about the shipping crisis and all this stuff? And it's like, we do, which is why we know the book's release date has changed and your post is wrong. And it's just kind of like, you missed the point that people were saying. So that's where Dark Horse's communication definitely needs to improve in that like people know the actual release date of the book because they know delays are happening. So um, weird, frustrating situation uh, that most of the news is delays to stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where we're at really. Uh, it's like that, waiting for merchandise to come out and then waiting for news so we might have news 
um, next week with the Legends RPG. We might have news the week after with the Investors event, but it also could be nothing. Like they're, they're, the PDF could be further delayed, and the Investors event could not mention Avatar Studios. And then we're back to like nothing basically and waiting for like free comic book day for something to happen and this is where like the sort of like avatar studios planning side of things feels a bit like weird of like why is nothing happening like what why does avatar studios existing cause everything else to crawl to a complete halt when like you have people who like with like tim hedrick you clearly can have work on these other projects as well so that's why the whole Chronicles of the Avatar information ended up being that was something people grasped onto because that means there probably is a book announcement coming soon-ish and <laughs> and that's where I think most of the the kind of hope is and that like we hope we find out what one of the projects is soon we hope we get the Legends book with some new information and just books and comics get announced but uh, you know it, it highlights that we have books up until like June and then we do have to mention here, not mentioned on Edelweiss, which is what I was going off here. Beasts of the Four Nations forgotten in all of this um, because it still <laughs> hasn't ever been officially acknowledged by Dark Horse, even though we've known about it for like over half a year. I don't have a clue what's going on with that book. W what are your thoughts on, on Beasts of the Four Nations? Like we have known about it for ages, but basically is in this kind of half announced state still yeah that i don't know it really seems like it's in this limbo area of like it's there but it's not really there at the same time and i don't know maybe because that book seems to you know from what we were getting at you know i guess months and months ago when we first started talking about it that you know it was actually going to have like or it was going to need to have you know newer content developed just for that just to sort of explain things a little bit more since there really isn't that much information on you know, the beast of the avatar world or at least not in like the detail that those books usually go on in addition to like sort of you know creating additional artwork as well so i don't know maybe that one is really you know sort of being held up by actually just like producing it as you know in general not just like sort of like the sourcing of materials like what seems to be the issue with all the other books so i don't know that one definitely feels like it's really been pushed to the back burner which i guess in the grand scheme of things isn't like you know the worst things to be pushed to the back it just seems odd because we've known about it for so long or at least some of us have yeah um and and that's the thing like th this book is the uh what the sixth of the six uh, deluxe edition books that is going to complete the set so that's another kind of part of like the, the worry in a way about this of like the fact that we know about it but they're not saying anything about it is that please don't mess up the like really expensive deluxe set thing by like doing some weird thing with the final book because everyone likes the idea of this as the final book and the idea that like the collection will be like waiting who knows how long for it the more realistic date, because I think it currently has like a placeholder date of like July this year, is like what well, four months on from the book four balance art book. So we're we're more leaning towards maybe like September, <laughs> October, November will be the actual release date for this book, unless it's like delayed for some other reason. Um, but like you said, like it, it is the I suppose most amount of effort that Dark Horse are going to have to put into a new book in. A very very long time in a way like since the release of the book for balance art book the original printing of it like that's the last time they did like a a big book that is just completely sort of newish content and even then this is even newer than that mm -hmm. because they have to like basically make the content themselves or you know a, you know utilize content that is given to them by like avatar studios or artists or whatever because I, I don't think they're just going to use already known concept art for animals. I assume there'll be lots of new stuff in this. Um, mm -hmm. But it's something, you know, when that finally gets officially announced, hopefully they say a little bit more about it. Maybe they have some very early preview pages to show what it's like and um, just to fully clarify a lot of that stuff. But um, yeah, we're just waiting for a lot of stuff. Um, 
I suppose the final thought is just um, what do you think will be the first like actually like big announcement of the year? Like, do you think we'll hear about a comic first, a novel first, Avatar Studio something first? Hmm, that's a good question. That's a, a good question. I don't know. I mean, I guess in the order we have like probably the you know the studio news that could come up you know first rather other than the the trading card game but i don't know i don't feel the trading card game i think there will be something from there but i'm not sure how big i'll really feel about that and i don't really think that the studio news will be that huge at least not this early on so i would probably lean more towards either a book or a comic at this point in terms of like a larger type of news now will any of that actually sort of be produced at any near point in time that's sort of the the more worrisome part to me um in terms of like even if it does get announced when will we actually you know see something from it but i guess i would probably go with the books um or sort of the the written material over any of anything else as of this point right now yeah, that, that's where I'm leaning to, just in a way based off the Chronicles of the Avatar kind of little information. I get a feeling that the novel announcement probably will be the first major thing, just because at this point I have so little confidence in Dark Horse like doing stuff like that should be normal uh, that I, I just have no clue what they will announce next. Like, will there be a volume two of the Chibi thing? No clue. Will there be another like one shot comic thing? no idea like is this meant to be the only core comic of the year will we get a trilogy core comic trilogy that was apparently deep into production but never was officially announced no clue what's going on with them whereas at least chronicles of the avatar suggests there's an idea somewhere behind the scenes that a book about another avatar is happening um but yeah when will it be i i don't know because again there's no real, I suppose, set period of the year for like novels to get announced, um, and like the Comic Cons have in the last few years been such non-events for Avatar. I I wouldn't even have much confidence in in them because the the yeah. new approach of just doing like a Braving the Elements podcast at each of them makes for e- arguably like an even worse panel than it was before. So, um. We're in a weird spot now until, I guess, with Avatar Studios gets more official. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, official pictures of, like, the the Netflix cast in their outfits or something like that is, like, the next big piece of news, maybe. Our first, like, look of what that might look like. Mm -hmm. Um, But, uh, yeah, at the moment, it's a really unfortunate thing, but, like, 2022 is not shaping up, like, amazingly well for Avatar in that, like, the story content is, like, free comic book day book uh like half of patterns in time will be new content uh so like 30 pages and the chibi comic might deliver and then the legend stuff whatever that is whatever it amounts to other than that it's like whatever gets announced for right at the end of the year which there should be some stuff towards the end of the year because there usually is always like a release in like kind of august september october but again i think last year there really wasn't so um not, not even that kind of uh, feels like anything so um it, it's going to be a, a a frustrating year uh i think so hopefully stuff happens but uh that's been the podcast it, it's hard to predict like when we'll come back for the next podcast um because like if, if nothing happens at the investor event and we don't get the pdf like then there's like probably won't be much news but if we do get the pdf we'll probably discuss it for legends rpg and if there is news of course we'll discuss that so it could be like next podcast in a month but it could be like two podcasts in two weeks if the news kind of plans out the way (laughs) it should but uh for now that has been episode uh, 237 of the avatar online podcast it's been myself and greg thanks for listening and bye Bye-bye.